Yo. And joining us on the phones now from the legendary Dead Boys, it is Cheetah Crumb. Cheetah, how's it going, man? Good, man. How you doing? Uh, doing pretty good. It's been it's been a couple of years since you've been on the show, and uh, I really am glad that you're back, man. I appreciate it. Oh, yo, my pleasure, man. Are you uh, in Austin, Texas these days? Yeah, right now. Yeah, right at the moment, I'm uh, going to be going to Nashville next week for a few weeks. What do you do? No, I'm just going to visit my son. We start gigging again next month. I want to spend some time with him. That's cool. Before we do that. Yeah, you know, because we go out in June to July, so I want to see him before that. Well, since you're talking about going on the road, how did the Dead Boys 40th anniversary gigs go for you? Oh, well, so far they've been going great. I mean, we're still doing them. <laughs> yeah. Right. It's kind of it's kind of snowball on us, but yeah, it's just been, it's been fun. It's been a lot of fun. Nice. What was your favorite gig so far? Do you have any memorable ones? Well, yeah, I mean, there's, I mean, there's been several. Um, you know, to me, the most memorable one lately was Houston because I mean, like, had a kidney stone. It was killing me. I did a lot of pain during that gig. That's <laughs> what I remember the most right now. But um, what do you call it? Nottingham, England was a really good one, and London was really good. Um, but those are the two most recent ones that I really, really, really like. You know? Well, I heard I heard Johnny Blitz had some health issues too in the Oregon leg of the tour. Yeah, he has a problem, too. Yeah, you know, we're old guys, man. You know? <laughs> you know, we, we've been out for a while. And then it was like, you know, I mean, that was like the end of the tour. We started falling apart. <laughs> 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 well, I'm, I'm glad I'm glad that you didn't fall apart too much. You're going to you're gonna keep staying on the road for a while. That's pretty cool, man. Yeah, actually, we're going to be back up that way um, probably in November again. Well, you know, my daughter, who lives up in Portland, uh, sent me a bunch of photos hanging out with you guys, and man, was I jealous. I'm, I'm like, next time they come, I'm there for sure. <laughs> yeah, well, we're talking about the West Coast, um, yeah, probably you know, early November, well, I would guess. Well, we're not going to miss it this time. I can't wait to see you guys, man. Yeah, well, cool, man. We're looking forward to getting out there and playing them. You know, it's been ready to take some time off, and... We're ready to go. We're doing the punk rock bowling thing in Vegas in May, um, you know, the 26th. And then uh, we're going um, we're going out and doing a Midwest run uh, in the South and make up all the gigs I had to cancel, um, you know, back in March. Um, let me ask you this. How come you guys don't or have you tried to get former Dead Boys bass player Jeff Magnum involved? Well, he's just not the right guy for this band, you know. I mean, he didn't play on the first record, you know. And, um, you know, he just kind of, like, for some reason, it blocked me on Facebook and was talking some, you know, crap about me. I was like, okay, well, you know, hell with you then. Well, I mean, you know, <laughs> It's like, there's a long story. I mean, there's more to it than that, but I don't want to do it on the radio. Yeah, I don't, I don't blame you. You know, I, I had Jeff on the air on my show. The show's been on for about 18 years, and about eight years ago or 10 years ago, Jeff was on about four or five times, and he's a real angry person, man. <laughs> yeah, he is, you know, and I don't want to listen to that in the van anymore. <laughs> he had nothing nice to say. You know, well, yeah, just, you know, that's all. It's just like, you know, I'm, you know, kind of, um, I try to keep stuff like that out of my life like these days. But, you know, drama is not that much fun anymore. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll tell you what. I'm not the only one hosting the show. Sitting next to me is Sister Tracy, and she would like to say hi to you, man. Okay. Hey. Uh, how you doing there, Sister Tracy? Hey, Cheetah. How's it going? Um, I just had a quick question. I uh, The current lineup that you've got, um, can you kind of tell us a little bit about uh, how that came about. I know uh, you did the recording of Young, Loud, and Snotty. Um, you re-recorded that, right? For Right before the tour? Yeah. And yeah. then, uh, is it Jake that's on vocals? Yeah, Jake Howell. Yeah, I just thought it was kind of interesting. I read a little bit about how that came about. Can you kind of just let our listeners know how the current lineup kind of came together? 
Well, yeah, well, um, you know, Genji had been playing with me um, in my solo band since, like, 2014. And um, when we were talking about doing it, it turned out, um, you know, I had seen these guys did this gig, The Undead Boys, you know, whatever. And it was, uh, it, it was cool videos. And they, I don't know, we thought it was good, you know. And um, it turned out that um, James knew those guys from uh, San Francisco. He had met them out there. And um, so when we were going out to play California, I said, well, why don't we get to, you know, I don't feel like singing while we should. <laughs> I kind of want to sing and we'll get the bass player. We had to, you know, find a bass player anyway. You know, we went to a spinal tap, you know, you know, spinal tap issue with bass players, not drummers. Mm-hmm. Yeah, <laughs> so it happens. You can't keep on. <laughs> yeah, they explode. It's the same exact thing. Man. <laughs> explode. Yeah, and anyway, so you know they joined us for the gigs. We, there's like three gigs, like you know San Francisco, LA, and San Diego. And I mean, it was Jake came on stage with us at the whiskey, and it was bam, and we right there. And um, we worked so good. I mean, it was like, oh, okay. <laughs> that's so that's rad. That's what it evolved into. Uh, that's what it evolved into. You know, get you know, re- get Richie on bass, and because John, because Mike, the bass player, Mike Scanlon, he couldn't um do it because his, you know his wife was pregnant. And he, you know, he didn't want to be on the road to Bertie or the kid, you know, the kids' um, life, which I can't blame him. And um. So, you know, we used them to get some money and got Ricky. We knew he could do it. Well, that had to be kind of a, a dream come true for Jake. I mean, how many people, like, you know, are in a tribute band to somebody that they admire and then all of a sudden get to be, like, you know, in the, in the band? So that had to be a pretty big deal for him. Oh, yeah, yeah. When he enjoyed it, you know, he's, um, he's definitely stepped in and filled you know, the void that it was there for, you know, at least for me and Blitz, you know, um, which is good because, you know, it's nice to have somebody out there, you know, you can trust and, you know, Jake, you know, he's just getting me just better and better all the time with him. You know, so it's really, really, kind of, it's really still fun and it's still new for us, you know? Yeah, very cool. And I hear that fans of Stiv, uh, you know, like Jake, really are impressed by his his performance, and uh, you know that says a lot. You know what I mean? Yeah. Well, that was all. You know, after that first week of the whiskey, like we were a whole bunch of people, you know, were friends of mine and friends of Stiv's, and they were like, "Can you kind of keep this guy? You gotta keep this guy." You know. So I was like, you know. You know, I agree with them, but you know, I was surprised to hear a bunch of people, certain people. I was real surprised to hear so, you know. support. What's this support? <laughs> yeah, so it was, uh, you know, usually some people, you know, be like, you know, you can't get, you know, <laughs> those that don't want me to, you know, they don't even want me to sing a song, you know, hey. <laughs> they like, they were good with Jake doing it, right. <laughs> Well, one of our one of our listeners uh, sent me a question over. They want me to ask you. Okay. Uh, Dutch in Texas wants to know if you ever knew shock rocker, scum rocker Gigi Allen. Oh yeah, yeah, I knew Gigi um, very well. Really? Yeah, yeah. Actually, um, I knew him uh, before we did the shock rocker thing because um, he had. Um, Contacted Kenya when she first started her record label, and um, so we had been we met kind of through there, you know. And um, I did like a couple gigs up that way in his band, uh, you know. Uh, the Jabbers for me. The Jabbers. Yeah, yeah. But this is before this is before the, he got dressed up and Benny and stuff, you know. I didn't see him for about two years. He came back and he was like this maniac. So before he lost his mind, basically, yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But I mean, you know, he's always a good, you know, always a good man. You know, I always liked, I always liked him. Oh, uh, you know, after, after he got, you know, the good crazy rep and all that. Every now and then, he stopped by my place in New York, and uh, you know. <laughs> always a gentleman, always clean, you know. <laughs> That's good. <laughs> so, you know, 
So that's good. I mean, I, I wouldn't go to any of the gigs just because, you know, I don't, I don't want to get any of that stuff on me. <laughs> but, you know. <laughs> it's a little too punk rock. <laughs> yeah, I, you know, I you know, I can, I always love those guys. I gotta ask you this too. Um, towards the end of Stiv Bader's life, I know he was living in France and and doing his thing. But were you guys in touch all the way up until the end, or were you guys still friends? Oh yeah, yeah, we were definitely uh, friends. You know, I mean, I told. Um, we had actually had plans to hook up and, uh, and work on another project, you know? And uh, I guess we would be going out to L.A. at the beginning of the year to do some groundwork for that. And then, you know, it just kind of wasn't to me. Yeah, I, uh, something we talked about about four years ago when you were on my show was about you know, the common theme, I'm a, I'm a singer and a rocker as well, but we talked about drug and alcohol abuse, and I know that you'd gone through a, a long period of sobriety. Is that still working for you, Cheetah? Um, well, you know, I've, um, you know, I'll have a beer here and there, you know? Yeah, just curious. But, um, yeah, but it's, you know, yeah, I'm still, you know, I'm still doing okay. Good to hear, bro. I'm glad you're still playing guitar. And what are your favorite guitars? My first one, favorite Vic Flitch Harris, probably is Al Clements and James Williams and, um, let me see, Glenn nice. Buxton, you know, Keith Richards, Jimmy Page, like, you know. Yeah. A whole bunch of them. It'd be a long list. I mean, you know, I'm a sponge for that stuff. Mick Ralph, I love Mick Ralph. Bad company. <laughs> yeah. No, Mata Hoople. Mata Hoople, okay. yeah. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> Oh yeah. yeah, same guy, but you know, I'm not, I wasn't a big, big, big company fan. Back to yeah. uh, back to the re-recording of the uh, the Young Loud and Snotty uh, record. Did you? Um, I mean, obviously there were several years that separated the first time in the studio and and this last time. Did you have more fun this time around? Did you kind of you know what was different about the recording of it this time versus uh, obviously? The so lineup change, you know what I mean. But did you have did you have more fun this time? Was it uh, was it better this time around? Well, it was um, it was just as fun. I wouldn't say it was more fun, but it was just as fun. Uh, you know, it was cool because you know now we had a little bit of experience. You know, we knew we knew what we, what we wanted. We knew how to get it. So yeah, it was you know it was nice to be able to do that finally. You know, and, you know we did it quick. We did it just a couple of days, just to the original. You know, sure. and then uh, it, it was a. Uh, it was a lot of fun. <laughs> we, def we definitely enjoyed the, re the recording process for us during the switch. Well, cool. And it was a good way for uh, you to celebrate kind of the 40th anniversary and give the fans something to, to buy <laughs> at the shows. Yeah, well, yeah, yeah. And, uh, you know, we wanted to do a version, wanted to do a you know, box set or something with the original albums but um that got held up so um, here we are <laughs> down on the road instead yeah um do you have any particular favorite songs off young loud and snotty um i always like playing not anymore that's my it's one of my favorites to play live yeah what a great one um then uh I was like, you know, I need lunch this a good one, too. That's a fun one. And that is about Lydia Lunch, correct? Um, I, I told she inspired it, yeah. Nice. Um, I don't it, think it's all about her. I think there's some other people told me. And there's, but, you know. I got gotcha. you. Uh, if you're just tuned in, you're listening to the Church of Rock radio show on KSKQ Radio, <laughs> and we are interviewing the great Cheetah Chrome from the Dead Boys, and thanks for tuning in. Um, yeah. We wanted to ask you about your this Facebook battle you had about your name. Yeah, it's uh, like we know a lot of people who have had the same the same problem, and I just wondered, you know, like how much time did you have to spend arguing with those guys, and did they finally give in? 
No, I'm just, I, I finally just stop. You know, I don't care anymore. I mean, it's, it's stupid. Ridiculous. But, um, oh, yeah, and, um, you know, it was where I could, I could actually prove that their whole system recognized the same person. Because if I update my page, they have, like, a, these fan pages or whatever that Facebook itself creates, right? Uh-huh. And so if I update Eugene O'Connor's uh, page, she becomes fan page update. So that shows right there their sister recognizes I'm the same person. Yeah. You know? For those of but you who... you can't find a human being to explain that to that's not that's over like 19. You know? And <laughs> 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 it's like they're all like these, like these interns and, you know, just got there. You know? Yeah, because they'd, yeah, they'd have to pay somebody, actually, you know, they'd have to pay them decently if they got somebody yeah. that uh, knew what they were doing. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. So, so, you know, so they're like, well, yeah, well, you know, we, we sympathize well. There's nothing we can do about that. It's all Facebook, you know? I mean, I went to service with them for, like, I mean, you know, probably close to six weeks, you know? And just, it, it was always the same. No matter what I tried, you came back to get the same form email or, you know, Facebook message telling me that my, it's been reviewed and no can do, you know? Yeah, for our listeners that don't know, uh, we're talking about uh, Facebook and their, their issue that they had a couple years ago. Yeah, they, they want me to produce a driver's license and passport with Chia Chrome on it. Yeah, to prove your, basically, your <laughs> yeah. name. Yeah, that you've been yeah. using this name forever. No one knows you by any yeah. other name. <laughs> it's ridiculous. All right. All right. And it's, uh, you know, so we really want to drag it on BS to say, but it's still working. Everybody can buy me if they want to, you know, so who cares? That's right. Um, Cheetah, do you have any any artists that are like newer artists that you're fans of by chance? Or that you like? Oh. Yeah, there's a couple, um, a couple of, I can't remember the names of them, but there's one band from Italy I really liked. Ah. Maybe, maybe they're from Spain, I don't know. They, you know, they, they, uh, a couple of friends of mine sent me out of them, and, um, you know, I'm not sure I can, I'd have to call one of them and get the name. <laughs> no, yeah, I, I got it. <laughs> Seriously. <laughs> I'm useless when it comes to keeping up with new music, you know? I was going to ask you this, too. What are some of your favorite places to play these days? Like, I know, you know, some gigs are going to be more exciting than others. Is there any place in particular that's, like, really exciting to play when you guys play? Well, um, you know, New York's always good. Um, Camp Toronto's always really good. Um, LA, LA's been really good for the past few years. And, uh, you know, we just go over in England. And I mean, I, I love playing in Europe. You know, you know, I'll be being here. <laughs> and, yeah. uh, you know, the crowds are nice and just, uh, you know, it's cool. And um, so those are the ones that stand out, you know? Yeah. Um, I mean, the, you know, the English gigs are real cool. And, uh, you know, I've done some other stuff over in, in Europe. I mean, I love it over there. Besides uh, going to visit your son coming up, uh, what's uh, in the future for you guys? You said you're going to tour again and do some more of the Dead Boy stuff. Is there any recording or other projects you're uh, being a part of? Well, we're trying to do some of that. There's, um, you know, we're going to probably be doing stuff right through Labor Day, I mean, road wise. Uh, there is a couple of uh, pro- recording projects coming up that uh, just gotta make organize them, get a time frame before we can say anything about them. You know, but um, yeah, there's gonna be you know definitely more music from both the Dead Boys and from you know other people solo and stuff like that. I was watching a video the other day. <laughs> Uh, from the Johnny Blitz tribute show, um, the fun when he got stabbed back in the 70s and you guys were trying to raise some oh, money. Yeah. I remember watching John Belushi play drums for you guys. Yeah, isn't that it was great, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, and like, I think the drag queen uh, Divine was on stage as well. Yeah, she gave it Divine and uh, oh, I can't remember the name of uh, the Neon Women or something like that. Yeah. What a trip. Um, yeah, it was cool. It was like a cast of a play. It was cool. I heard a bunch of strippers 
<laughs> what a trip. <laughs> yeah, yeah. You know, hey, it was the 70s, man. It was still, you know, New York hadn't been cleaned up yet. Wouldn't, you know, wasn't all Disney-fied, no. <laughs> yeah, New York sure is a lot different these days, man. Oh, you know, yeah. I mean, it's not the safe city. It's, you know, to me, I mean, I lived there for 20 years, and now it's like just a stop on a tour. I, would, I couldn't live there for a week. Yeah. Or drive me, you know. I mean, I'm ready. I'm there for you know more than three or four days, and I'm ready to go. So you, I you, loved it. I used to love it. How, how are things in Austin, Texas, these days? Oh, good. You know, um, you know, we're. Um, I'm not actually in Austin. I'm outside of town. I'm up uh, in Louisville, where uh, the, the Boston bomber lived. Ah. Yeah, so, yeah, so. <laughs> <laughs> appropriate. And uh, yeah, yeah, you live like right down the road here. <laughs> so it was, you know, but it's Texas, you know. Austin's always, you know, always my always fun town, to, you know, to be in. Lots of great music in Austin that comes out of that place. Yeah, yeah, oh yeah, yeah. There definitely is. I mean, it's a great city. I just don't get down there a lot, you know. Yeah. But, yeah, so it's you know. So you know, I, I, when, I'm off, when I'm on the road, I'm always playing in bars. When I'm off the road, I don't want to play anymore near. You know? So I have kind of a fan question here before we wrap things up with you. Um, okay. The song Sonic Reducer, I mean, it's a it's just a classic, you know, classic punk rock song. Do you have a, a lot of people have covered it over the years. Do you have a favorite? I know you've probably been asked this a million times, but do you have a favorite cover um, of Sonic Reducer, a version of it? Oh. Um, my favorite thing that anybody did was it was the Beastie Boys. Oh, good choice. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> I just like I like uh, I just like what they did with it, speeds it up and all that. I mean, it's really really creative, you know, I, cool use of it. I've never ever heard that. That's a trip. Oh yeah, really? Oh yeah, BC, yeah. Well, yeah, it's great. It, you know, open letter in New York City. Yeah, it's, uh, I know Pearl Jam they, covered it and a couple other band, big bands. Yeah, but, yeah. yeah. There is, but, um, as far as like, you know, the, what, that, that probably my, my favorite use of it just because it's, uh, so off the wall, so cool. <laughs> I, mean, I didn't expect that at all. It sounds great. Well, I think what we're going to do is uh, wrap it up for now. We're going to go into a smoke break, and then we're going to play that version of Sonic Producer that, by the Beastie Boys just for fun, <laughs> if we can find it. <laughs> well, it's not Sonic Producer. It's called Open Letter to NYC. Okay. Okay. We'll yeah. try to track it down either way. Hey, Cheetah, thanks for taking cool. the time to come on our show. We really appreciate it, man. My pleasure. Thank you for having me. Yeah, and be sure to, you know, uh, we'll try to keep in touch. Let us know when you're going to be coming back out this way, and we'll have you, you know, have you on the show again. We'll do that. Yeah, much respect, and we are so so happy you're still around, and we love you very much and love everything you've ever done, bro. I, mm, mega gratitude, bro. Well, thank you very much, man. Okay, Cheetah, we have a good rest of the night. Yeah, God bless, brother. You you too, God God bless, man. Thank you.